Hey everybody, Pastor Jason and Pastor Andy here Amen. with you on this Throw Limits Off Thursday. Thursday. Come on, somebody. Oh man, what a great week it has been already. And listen, Hallelujah. we are now we are now one. two days away. On. One day if you're for, in Forsyth, two Ooh. days away if you are at Revival Center from Global Gala yes. 2019. I am so excited gonna be about the best. this. Going to be the best. It, I promise you, you have never been to a missions convention banquet extravaganza uh, <laughs> like this <laughs> ever in your life. And so I'm looking forward to it. Hey, listen, if you missed out, if you missed out on signing up, yes. but your heart is there, uh, just so you know, I ordered a couple extra spots, but those are filling up quickly. So if you need to reach out to us at the at the church office and ask us, just let us know. Hey, listen, I forgot to sign up, but I have a couple uh, you know, uh, people that I'd like to bring or I'd like to come myself and me and my husband, me and my wife, whatever it may be, just reach out to us and we'll let, let you know if there's still some room left. Yes. But I think we're going to have some room left for you. Like I said, they're filling up fast, but we'll just see how they go. But uh, looking so forward to it, my my good friend Jacob Jester is going to be here and you are not going to want to miss that. He's also going to be here Sunday morning. So yes. make, gonna, sure. Yeah, make sure you make get sure here Sunday morning. Here. It's going to be outrageous. Bless the so Lord. Pastor Andy, we've been talking about all week I love this because it always seems like every time we talk, it comes around to the body. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every time we talk, Rightfully so. <laughs> turns out you know. that that's the way it is. <laughs> but we started off, we started off this week talking about the heart of missions. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about the eyes of missions. Yes. Then we talked about, or, or start, sorry, the mind of missions. Then we talked about the eyes of missions. Today, we're going to talk about the hands of missions. Mm, yes. And so I love this because it's, it is, it is total spiritual body mm. included in this process. And we've had, we have this great opportunity uh, here at this church yes. that we get to have a heart, a mind, eyes, hands. And of course, tomorrow we're going to be talking about the feet of missions Amen. and what that's about. And by the way, thank you all for all of your kind uh, yes. comments as well. Y'all been stopping us and talking about how meaningful these devotions are to you, but particularly these about missions. Let me tell you, these are the easiest ones we're doing. I'm telling you. The easiest ones we're Love doing. It. When Love we it. talk about this, we're just talking about the heart of God yes. and, and how this goes. So I want to read a scripture here out of the book of Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to start. Uh, it's in chapter 9. And I'm going to start in verse 10. So Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. It says this. Whatever your hands find to do, mm -hmm. do it with your strength. For there is no work or planning, or knowledge, or wisdom in Sheol, which is the grave, the place where you are going. Mm. What Solomon is teaching us here, Pastor Andy, is he's saying, if you find something productive for your hands to do, yes. do it now. Mm. Yes. Do it in this lifetime. What are you waiting for? What are you saving it for? There is no work. There is no knowledge. There is no wisdom. There is no accomplishment when you get wow. to the grave. I love this because, because Jesus is, it, uh, it goes forward to the part where Jesus said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on this earth yeah. where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But instead, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy mm -hmm. and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your yeah. heart will be That's also. Right. Right. What Jesus is saying is, is in this time, you cannot, you cannot, when you go to the grave, you can't take anything with you. Mm. But when you give, you can send it ahead. Mm. Come on. You can send it ahead. That's right. That's you right. can actually, you can actually you store, up store up treasures in heaven. Now, in this, in this house, our pastor has a motto for our missions. Mm -hmm. And it is that that we reach people across the street, and across the seas. That's right. for, for us, we don't just view missions as, as what happens on foreign soil. Mm -hmm. We view missions at what, as, as what happens anywhere. The gospel of Jesus Christ is being propagated or being spread uh -huh. in this world. Yeah. Where anybody is taking life change, that is missions. Is missions. That's missions. So for us, we are not just a group of people who who uh, support uh, financially, support prayerfully uh, missions efforts that are going out mm. across the world. We're, yeah. we're not just a group of people who are supporting missions efforts 
that are happening throughout the United States. But we ourselves consider ourselves missionaries Mm -hmm. to the region where we are. Yes. And that's why we are so adamant about outreach here. Mm -hmm. So when we when we talk about missions, we're talking about things like Trail to Hell. That's right. We're talking about things like Compassion Center. We're talking about things like Thanks for Giving. Mm -hmm. All of these things we're doing. Yeah. These are all missions works That's right. for us. That's right. And we look for opportunities everywhere we can find them. One of the great things that's been happening inside of this house, a door that the Lord just opened wide for us mm-hmm. very recently, is we have had a chance to go and and feed teachers mm-hmm. at Butts County schools. Mm-hmm. And now it's actually spreading into Spalding County mm-hmm. and Henry County. Uh, right. That we've been able to go and minister to them, mm-hmm. been able to 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 uh, not only feed them but but bring some encouragement to mm-hmm. them, to be able to bless them, mm-hmm. and and this Pastor Andy is missions. It is. This it is, is us carrying life change. And if you don't believe it, yeah. walk into a school with us when we go deliver. <laughs> and these teachers walk in and they're like, "What in the world is going yeah. on here? Yeah. This is what you did for us." Yeah. And, and this is all missions. All of this counts. Mm. And so if, if taking life change to this world is missions, mm-hmm. that makes us all missionaries. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Solomon says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your strength. Mm. So Pastor Andy, as we talk about this, as we talk about being the hands of missions, when, when you think about particularly Andy Hosford mm-hmm. being the hands of missions, what does that look like to Andy Hosford when he's the hands of missions? To, yeah, to the so, so as I was thinking about it, that the more you was talking, matter of fact, right when you started reading the scripture, um, immediately it, it was brought up in my spirit in the book of James mm-hmm. that do not be hearers of the word only. Yep, that's right. But be doers of the word. Right. So that you don't deceive yourself. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and and so so as I was beginning to think about it, I, I and you know, um, because for me, it's it's a lifestyle. Yes. It's not a moment. That's right. And and so so in other words, I'm not changing mm-hmm. when 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 we get done filming here and and I go to the hardware store. Mm-hmm. I don't all of a sudden become somebody different. That's right. You, you understand That's what I'm exactly saying? Right. Yep. That's deceiving yourself. Mm-hmm. As the book of James, it says, as you look into the mirror and you forget <laughs> what you were supposed to be, right, right. what you were supposed to look like. Yeah. You look there and you've seen it and you said, man, uh, you know, Christian, as a Christian, I should do this, this, and this. Yep. And then you turn around and you walk away and you forget about all that. Yep. That's and, exactly and it. So for me, it's a lifestyle way more than a moment. Yes. And and I know we do short-term mission mm-hmm. trips, and I believe, I believe honestly, I believe everybody should do them. Mm-hmm. I, I really do. Amen. And uh, you got they're, they're, they're just amazing. Yes, sir. But on the other hand, it's, it's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I tell people, I said, any time that you're willing to devote your time, mm-hmm. devote your attention, devote your money, mm-hmm. and remove everything that benefits you to go benefit somebody else, you're going to see God show up in a mighty way. Every single I don't, time. I don't care where you go. I yeah. don't care if it's America. I don't care if it's Flo Villa. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's in Kenya. <laughs> I don't care if it's in Antarctica. When you turn around and you remove yourself, mm-hmm. you begin to deny yourself mm-hmm. so that you can go and help and serve somebody else in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. You're going to see amazing things happen. Yeah. And that's what, what Jesus said. He said, if you just give a cup of cold water in my name, yes, it's, it doesn't go wasted. Right. When does it go wasted? When you're doing it with the wrong heart, mm-hmm. the wrong motive. Mm-hmm. You, you understand what I'm saying? So yes. That's the reason I'm saying, for me, missions is a, it's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's a Christian lifestyle mm-hmm. that we're doing it every day, yeah, all day, nonstop. Now, there are times that we have to get together and focus mm-hmm. 
you know, we get together as a body and we say, hold on, everybody, let's rally around this idea mm -hmm. because it's going to be very effective. Yes. So yes. there's times that we, we get together for that. Mm -hmm. But but I believe that more than anything else, I believe, um, and, and once again, as we was talking at the beginning of the week, it's so hard when you begin to talk about missions, it's so hard to pick one verse and turn around and say, mm -hmm. this is a missions verse because the entire Bible yeah. is missions. The entire the, thing. The yep. entire thing's missions. Mm -hmm. the, once you become reborn, mm -hmm. a new creation. That's right. Once you do that, you become a missionary. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. become the light yeah. of Christ in a dark world. Yes. It, it, no longer is it anything that's... Um, uh, it's not generated from you, more or less, if, if that That's makes right. sense. That makes you understand sense. what I'm yeah. saying? Because you're a new creation. When you showed up in the room, light showed up in the room. Yeah. Love showed up in the room. Hope showed up in the room. Healing showed up in the room. And it's not, it's the God that's in you. It's not you doing this purposefully or either you bring glory to yourself. Right. I think of it like this. I think really at, at Abundant Life Church, it's very interesting because uh, we are such an a, a local evangelism, mm -hmm. local outreach driven church mm -hmm. that that we at times can fall into one of two camps. Mm -hmm. One camp is is that we're so focused on our local outreach that we forget that there is also a world out there that has to be reached. Absolutely. The other one is that we because we are involved in local outreach, we, we also, uh, we have in our minds that maybe we're not missions focused and mm. missions minded. But I think about something that you said on Tuesday when, when you were talking about, uh, you know, we'll give people things to do and they'll say, yeah, but please don't take outreach from yeah. me. <laughs> no, don't take that. <laughs> because, you know, it, 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 with Abundant Life Church, one of the things I thought about is, is just about every week now, we get, a, we get an update from our jail ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, and our jail ministry is a longstanding, very effective very, ministry. Very effective. That literally every week souls are being won to the kingdom. That's right. That's right. Because of that, and we're going to a group of people that that a lot of times uh, our th our thinking about them becomes very polarized. Of course. We begin to look at it and we say, well, you know, these people, they've, they've stunk it up in life and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they, they're kind of, they're just where they belong. Mm -hmm. And, and the fact is, uh, by the way, everybody in here who's been locked up at one time, <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> I was indeed where I belong when I got locked up. However, uh, thankfully, thankfully I wasn't left to rot in there and left to let the system come to me. I was thinking about this while you were while you were speaking, because I was thinking about uh, the book of Jonah, mm -hmm. and there's if there is a book in the Old Testament that shows me grace mm -hmm. before grace was being taught yes, yes, yes. to us in the New Testament, it is the book of Jonah. Yes, it is. It is a nation that was so vile mm -hmm. that the prophet who was sent to them hated them because of their unrighteousness. Yes. But God loved them enough to send a person to That's them right. that even hated them. And I think about this because the book of Jonah is the only book of Scripture, only book of the Bible that ends with a question mark. Mm. Mm. And this is something that's so cool because this is what God says. Verse 10 of Jonah 4, it says, The Lord said, You are troubled about the plant for which you did not labor and did not grow. It came up in a night and it perished in a night. Should I not therefore be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? God said, you got so concerned about something trivial, yeah, Jonah, that, means nothing. that you forgot. Wow. What I didn't forget yes. is that there are 120,000 souls in Nineveh that I made. And that I don't want to lose. Come on. Come on. When we're thinking with the thoughts of God, yeah. seeing with the eyes of God, when we are, when when the heart that's inside of us that's beating is the heart of God, it won't take any time for these hands 
to be the hands of God. Come on. Now, the hands of God for me, there are a lot of ways that that can look for me. Mm -hmm. The hands of God can be me literally reaching out and, and, and ministering to somebody, praying for somebody. Mm -hmm. It can be me showing compassion. It can be me handing out a Thanksgiving, yes. a Thanksgiving dinner yeah. to somebody. It can be, it can be uh, me handing out uh, clothing and food in our yeah. compassion center. Yeah. It can be, uh, it can be me um, uh, laying hands on and ministering to somebody who is sick in the hospital. Yeah. It can yeah. be me uh, reaching out across and, and, and holding the hand of a, of a person who is in lockdown right now. Mm -hmm. It can also be me reaching up for me mm -hmm. and grabbing my phone mm -hmm. and heading over to the Abundant Life app and, pay, and paying yeah. my monthly yeah. missions commitments. That's right. That's right. That's right. When, when my family and I sit down, when my wife and I sit down mm -hmm. to do our commitments, the first thing that we do is we return the Lord's tithe. The second thing we do is we begin to give missions offerings. Now, that's not because we're special, no. just so you know that. We're not special, just so you know. Not special at all. My wife is. I'm not. Um, <laughs> but what it is is it's years ago our hearts were broken mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the nations of the earth. Yes. And we realized, man, there is, there is so much that I can do and the easiest thing I can do. Come on. Of all of those things that my hands can do, Pastor Come on. Andy, Come on. the easiest ones, the easiest thing I can yeah. do is give. It requires almost nothing yeah. out of me. Yeah, me and me and uh, Pastor Hare was talking, and I said sometimes if people just viewed money differently, mm -hmm. if they just viewed it as if it was corn. Wow. Okay. And so just imagine that instead of it being money, it was corn, mm -hmm. and you had a silo. I don't know if everybody knows what a silo is, but Silos where they store corn mm -hmm. and large amounts of Enormous corn. Enormous amounts, yeah. It's stored there. Mm -hmm. So you have a silo, mm -hmm. and it's just full of corn. And most Christians are in this case. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, when you've seen somebody, doesn't matter who, it really wouldn't matter who it was, mm -hmm. and they walked by and you knew they was hungry, mm -hmm. would you not be willing I mean, you got a silo mm -hmm. of corn. Yeah. A silo. Yeah. Would you not be willing to fill up their purse with corn? Mm -hmm. Of course you would. 100%. I mean, you would even go out of your way and say, hey, come here. Mm -hmm. Come here. Get some, get some corn so you have something to eat. Yeah. But for some reason, when it becomes money, yeah. we can have an account full mm -hmm. and remove our feelings. Mm-hmm. Not from our money. Yeah. Because I promise you, if somebody came and took your money, your feelings would show up. <laughs> yeah, they would. <laughs> <laughs> they would. Somehow we've been able to remove it from those people and their situation. Mm -hmm. Somehow we've been able to disconnect it from what God says mm -hmm. our neighbor is. Yeah. And the right thing to do is. Right. And so I'm reminded about the man that Jesus was telling the story and the, mm -hmm. and the, and the priest passed by mm -hmm. and the Pharisee passed by. And here's this man, he was beaten on the street and he was left for dead. Mm -hmm. And what'd they do? They just passed by mm -hmm. doing what was the right thing. Yep. They passed by, but here it is. This other guy, he comes up, he takes care of him. Mm -hmm. He turns around and he ministers to him. Mm -hmm. How did he minister? How was he to hands? He turned around, he binds up his wounds. Yep. He takes him to a hotel. He turns around, puts him in there, and he says, hey, whatever bill he runs up to take care of him, I'll pay it. Don't yeah. worry about it. I'll take care of that. Yeah. That's how he was the hands at that point mm -hmm. in time. And and Jesus looks at it and he says, now, mm -hmm. who was his neighbor? Yeah. You know? Right. Who, who was his neighbor? Yeah. And, and the amazing thing is, is this right here, Pastor Jason? We don't have to fill up our silo with corn. No. Jesus never asked us mm -hmm. to fill up the silo. Yeah. He never asked us to do that. Mm -hmm. All he asked us to do was to be stewards mm -hmm. of what he gave. As a matter of fact, he warned us in the in the parable, what they could refer to as the parable of the unjust steward. Mm -hmm. That's right. That this man receives a bumper crop. 
and he says, look at me. I am, I am rich and increased with goods and I have need of nothing. And, 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 uh, and he says, here's what I'm going to do. My, I have more than my barns will hold. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to build bigger barns. Yeah. And Jesus said, you fool, this night your soul will be required of you. That's right. Because what's happened is, is that, that as we are given provision, we are, we are the poorest person who is the poorest person in the United States of America who is watching and listening to us right now. Mm. The poorest person is, is more wealthy than 75% of the entire world. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The poorest person yeah. who is who is watching and listening to us in the United States is wealthier than that. Now here's the deal. I know, I know you're looking at me and you're saying, man, all you guys are after is my money. Well, you you really failed to listen to the first half of this entire thing. Yeah. Because we're not after we're we're not after your money alone. <laughs> <laughs> we're after your time, your talents, your energies, your efforts. Because here's the thing, this is what Solomon said. For in the grave, there is no produce. There is no thought. There is no wisdom. There is nothing left to do. I want to be able, I want to be able to stand before God. Yes. And hear him say, well done. Mm -hmm. What if, what if, Pastor Jason, what if when we stand before God, and we're in a courtroom, and you stand up and you say, God, I did this and I did this and mm -hmm. I was I was I I I lived a Christian life the way you said mm -hmm. and your money stood up and said I was not used the way I was supposed to be wow. used. Wow. Yeah. What if your time stood up mm -hmm. and testified against you? Mm -hmm. I believe that we, Pastor Jason, many times rather than using the Bible to be our Mm -hmm. Our standard. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? We compare ourselves sometimes to uh, to other people. And most of the time in that in that sense, we won't even compare ourselves to the highest of those. Yeah. We'll compare ourselves to the lowest of those. Right. You know, but I I believe when we get there that that at that point in time, we will turn around and and. And we'll be in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And that's when things, it says that our works, yeah. if they're not done honorably, mm -hmm. righteously, in truth, yeah. they'll be burned up. Yeah. They'll be, every work will be tried by fire. Everything that was done for selfish motives will be burned up like wood, hay, and stubble. Everything else will be refined like gold. That's mm -hmm. what Jesus said. It's very interesting because obviously you could look at Matthew. I'm going to give you just the verses for you to look at later. Matthew 25 verses 31 through 46 tells us what it's going to be like when yeah. he judges the nations at the at the close of it. This It was literally what you were saying. There's another part in the scripture where Jesus says, whoever says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. will enter into mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven but only those who have done the will of my father. There will be those who say of me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Come did on. we not do this work in your name? And I will say to them in that moment, depart from me. Ooh. I never knew you. Ooh. There is no wisdom. There is no thought. There is no pro productivity in the grave. What are we saving it? What are we saving our time for? I, I honestly believe, and I know we're out of time. Yes, sir, I know. I honestly believe, Pastor Jason, those are limits. Yes. That we hold back everything that God has for mm -hmm. us. And we view it out of the only mm -hmm. uh, perspective we know how. Yeah. The only perspective we know how. And God's viewing it out of his saying, if you only understood. Mm-hmm. You think you're giving it all. And all we can see is this little thing right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's all we can see. And he has this huge harvest over yeah. here. <laughs> He's like, if you would just, if you would just remove this, mm -hmm. I could unload this. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? I agree. And, and many times you refer to it about the log pile. 
jamming up. Mm-hmm. And if you could just get that one, that mm-hmm. one log to to give, mm-hmm. the whole pile would flow on down the river. That's right. And 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 I believe that what we're addressing today are mindsets that are limiting God's people. Yeah. I honestly do. And look how it's all connected. I know we said this earlier in the week, but look how it's all connected. We're saying, we're talking about the hands of missions, but we're talking about minds and hearts today. Complete. All Mm -hmm. of it is connected. This is the body ministry. Yes. This is the body ministry. So Pastor Andy, as we go into prayer today, I know we're out of time. Thank you, by the way, Thank everybody so who much. sticks with us for these lengthy <laughs> ones where we get war, uh, we wear, yeah. Uh, but as we go to prayer today, I want you to pray that our hands would find productive work, yes. productive kingdom work, and that we would do it with all of our strength yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. Right now, Father yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Maru I thank you so much for your Dalai. word. I thank you for the awakening right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, that's it. And Lord God, I speak the people's dreams right now in the mighty name of Jesus that have been placed on the back burner because money was not there, that have been placed on the back burner because they could not see, Lord God. They could not see how in the world it would happen. And right now, Lord God, you're speaking to them and you're telling them how it's going to happen. They're looking at the harvest, but it's got to have a seed. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask Holy Spirit, Speak to them yes. in their hearts. Woo. Let them know their seed. In the name speak of to them Jesus. in their hearts. Yes. Awaken that dream yes. right now. Yes. Awaken that ministry. I speak to it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say, though it may look small in the beginning, there is a great harvest yes. that he yes. has planned remove the limits mm. remove the limits with seed remove the limits with prayer yes, remove Lord. the limits by be giving self-denial yes, and putting yourself out there remove the limits yes. i pray right now in the holy name spirit of jesus i thank you for yes it. yes yes i release it right now in, in the, the mighty name, name of, of jesus. jesus my god i release it right now in the mighty name of jesus mm. You're listening right now, and God has placed a dream of a ministry Mm -hmm. inside of you. Mm -hmm. You've never known how it was going to happen. The vision is so big that you could not find the starting place right now. He's speaking to you. Yes. He's speaking to you, and he's saying, put yourself to the side. Mm. Put Mm. yourself to the side. Move forward in Mm. faith. Yeah. Move forward in faith. He will supply. Mm. Mm. Thank you for it. Thank you, Thank you for it, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Yes, God. Lord God, we right now pull down every mindset that in exalts itself Jesus. up to the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every mindset that says that God's not able mm-hmm. to perform, mm-hmm. to build his church, to build his body. Mm-hmm. Lord God, you will build your church and mm-hmm. the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Yes. You will provide. Yes. You yes. are a good father. You are Jehovah Jireh. Yes. I thank you for it. Yes, God. I thank you for it. My God. You give seed to the sower, and the sower sows the word. Yes. You are the Lord of the harvest. Yes. You give the harvest, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for joining us today. It It has been a powerful and Amen. prophetic time here. Amen. Now, here's the thing. I want to I tell you about prophecy. Mm. Prophecy is not just going to come to pass in your life. You have to position yourself yes. for it to come to pass. And so today, you have heard the word of the Lord. Mm. You've not only heard us teaching and ministering today, but you heard the man of God mm. speak a prophetic word over your life today. Yes. Yes. However, it will not happen unless you put it to work. Yes. In your life. So I dare you Come on. today. Come on. I dare you Come on. to put it to work in your life. I dare you to step out today. I dare you to do it and watch and see what God does Thank with your hands, with your mind, with your heart, mm. with your eyes today. 
Maru Shandalabakaya. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Hey, everybody. Pastor Jason here. We want to thank you for joining us for today's devotion. Remember to share it across your social media platforms. If you live in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas and you are looking for a great church where the power and the presence of God are on display, we would love to have you visit us at our Revival Center campus in Locust Grove, Georgia, or our Forsyth campus in Forsyth, Georgia. You can find information about these locations at our website, AbundantLifeChurch.com. Remember, it's time to stretch yourself. It's time to dream bigger. It's time to believe for the impossible. It's time to expand.